J'ai appelé ce... I chose to call this presentation En Marche, Forwards. Forwards towards the circular economy. I could have called it Semantics of the Circular Economy because the vocabulary is important. Three diagrams in order to define our point of view about the path to be followed for the circular economy. I think the path, the trajectory, has a strategic intelligence applied to territorial development involving market players, institutions, networks, and R&D. The dynamics, of course, you need dynamics in circular economy, legislation, the added value for the territories, third point, and the indispensable, indispensable semantics. And in fact, scientific research, which is still in its early stages. So, as an introduction, this diagram, a linear or circular economy. For about 10 years, the vocabulary seems to have uh, concealed rather than expressed the environmental aspects. However, the circular economy for the past 20 years reflects a kind of strategic intelligence applied to the development of communities in order to affect their social production. And here is a second diagram that shows the configuration of the various stakeholders. And that was created about 10, 15, maybe 20 years ago. I, I wrote this. And I think it's important because you can't have economic, circular or not, if you do not take the intersection of these three circles with, in the middle, in strategic intelligence. So market players, institutions, networks, R&D, what leverage is there? There's the social dimension, the innovation, the eco-technology, potentially circular, circular eco-technology, technology is important, and planning. From 2017 onwards, the circular economy became a kind of managerial strategic target, to use managerial speak. There are local policies that are advanced in this field. There's a mobilization of dynamics, which is relatively well monstered, as defined by ADEM, and in France, across very different communities, or in industrial or rural activity parks that are well known. I'm thinking about Organic Valley and others. These are principles of organization uh, for the circular economy of the kind of, uh, in the interest of what I call strategic interest. And the third diagram, I'd like you to look at it very closely, shows that strategic intelligence is at the heart of the development of momentum in the circular economy uh, for the various levers I discussed earlier. Look more closely. You will see uh, that these aspects are very important if you wish to truly study. There are various kinds of dynamics here in the environmental uh, field as eco-design, how can you regulate the use of uh, stocks of inventories and regulation of flows organically and inorganically, uh, inorganic matter, organic matter, flora and so on, to produce an economy of uh, uh, consumer goods. Environmentally, the dynamics are moving towards a reduction of waste, uh, and moving towards a secondary use, of raw materials once recycled and to control waste on the whole. In the economic order, how can you promote dynamics in public procurement and cooperation between the various stakeholders? 
those who produce the goods, uh, the uh, local governments and so on, to create dynamics of circularity and cost sharing, economic, social and environmental. So those are the dynamics that are better expressed. Legislation. In Europe, legislation is favorable to environmental industry. I'm thinking about the European package, Germany, uh, the Netherlands, in France, the law about green growth and energy transition and the former code of the environment. Much more interested in these measures, but even more so in environmental preservation of territories on the scale of local governments. Uh, uh, local communities uh, are more present in French legislation. And in figures, there's always the same type of measures here, but the issue of land use is uh, uh, crucial because it's the inalienable property of the state. The state suggests geographic planning uh, to form the basis of this. But if you look at Europe, France and China, you can say that the differences are major because they evidence the fact that there cannot be a circular economy or territorial environmentalism without strategic intelligence, as I was showing you earlier. And from the point of view of strategic intelligence, the environmental quality of the products and the environmental preservation of territories are a duality uh, that has nothing to do with what I was talking about earlier, the difference between uh, uh, circular and linear uh, cycles. It's a pair that produces because it is a pair, and it creates territorial added value. Let us now talk about the nature of territorial added value. Territorial added value is created by ecological planning, the value of the soil. Uh, its value, its uh, land value, its uh, uh, land use value and all that. And all of that is interesting, of course. You can't talk about circular economy if you're not talking about a land income. That's how a lot of the economy works. But this land income is uh, yielded by something that is not produced, the land. The land is there, it exists. There's no balance of profitability uh, allowing you to compare it in terms of economic value. It's like air or water, biodiversity and so on. On the level of the land, the territory is a kind of common good that is invaluable a kind of uh, asset, it is like an asset, where uh, the land income is rooted, and in that land income, the entire value chain uh, dwells. The merchant value, the usage value, comes through uh, this kind of, uh, of land revenue, where we live, what we farm, and so on. And the added value of the territory is therefore a kind of, uh, a kind of bonus for the enlarged reproduction of capital, uh, the money that we have, or the capital in the economic sense, in its uh, general reproduction. So how can you talk about circular economy if you do not take into consideration these questions? This key factor, the added value itself. We need to agree on words. It's also an issue of semantics. If you think of the broader circulation of capital, it's a kind of a magical aspect to talk about circular economy, where you oppose circular and linear. It doesn't mean much. Even more so as in the world of the economists, circular or not, you have, you have directed economies, uh, where you can talk about circular economy. There's the informal economy, where there's no data. And you have the natural economy. I'm thinking of these archaic economies, uh, where you have uh, uh, primal arts, for instance, or, but where the, the economy is uh, uh, much more complex anthropologi anthropologically than it seems. It's a kind of preservation of evolution preserved through these archaic economies. And they also need to be taken into consideration in talking about 
the circular economy. If we take the uh, well-known example of the Yangtze Delta, uh, a Chinese researcher found it difficult to explain to a peasant uh, in the Yangtze Delta, it's a very advanced region, the difference between recycling and composting. Recycling, the peasant did understand, but composting, yes, because he found it difficult to envision the entire value chain. So, in scientific research, we're far from the mark, even in 2018, in the terms of uh, its uh, application to the circular economy. It's now emerging. It barely existed a few years back. There is a doctoral thesis being written about the institutional approach to the circular economy. The University of Montpellier research is aiming uh, for the institutions, for public institutions, institutions, how do they work in terms of the circular economy? The MOOC in 2018, and there are uh, uh, scientific papers that are being published, they're very heterogeneous of course, but they are seeking to gradually conceptualize the concrete challenges and dynamics that can be applied to the circular economy. And the final question that arises, or at least for the time being, Desirable on the scale of each territory, the hypothesis of the circular economy is often treated in macroeconomic terms. Its local visibility is unclear if you don't look at experiences that have taken place. How can you steer or pilot locally an exit from the general crisis, uh, environmental, economic, financial crisis? How can things be steered locally without taking into consideration the issue of anth anthropology of each of the, the territories and of uh, the natural habitat? No applied research is being conducted on the life cycle of, of capital. There is research I think about Sabine Ball, who uh, will be talking here about the stocks and flows, what she calls the territorial meta metabolism. But who is studying the life cycle of the capital in the sense that the capital circulates, it has a broader circulation that, uh, that is becoming wider and which makes no sense when a crisis occurs? Who is studying the life cycle of the capital uh, based on buildings, mobility, transportation, all of these elements of our day-to-day -day lives? Uh, for the time being, research in the circular economy have not really uh, paid attention to this. Uh, although I believe this is fundamental if we are to move forward, if we are to create an environmental civilization, what Bordel calls the material civilization, in a book uh, he wrote about 20 years ago, and I believe that we must really ask important questions about added value, not only applied to the issues of the climate, but also locally, the value of the habitat and, uh, and of our lifestyles. Perhaps two years from now, the MOOC project that will take place will take us there, but it depends uh, on you, on me, on everyone. Thank you.